clocks, clocks, tell the time, but they've got to be seen. So from a distance, some of the detail just can't be seen, but you've got to be able to view them. A typical classroom clock is plastic, quite cheap, quite unadorned, and always uses a pretty basic quartz movement. The quartz movement you're going to use will need these clearance sizes. Basically, a 60mm square hole is needed, a 10mm hole is mounted through the dial, and if you want the hook to be included on the uh, casing of the movement, you need an additional 20mm at the top. Your clock is going to be made from acrylic or perspex, which comes in nice bright block colours, is generally in 3mm or six, uh, 5 millimeters wide and can be cut with a saw or can be cut on the laser cutter. You're also going to use uh, plywood or choose to use plywood which can be laminated like these ones have been glued together and then you can also cut out maybe an aperture for your uh, movement to fit inside. Your glass, should you choose to use it, will almost certainly be a little bit of uh, polycarbonate or PVC uh, clear acrylic which again will be uh, two millimeters across and uh, this can be glued in, it could be used with double-sided adhesive tape, but it needs to look professionally fitted rather than just glued on and stuck down. Your drawing work is going to be done on paper. If you wish to use an isometric grid, you can put this under your paper to help you draw. And we're going to draw our designs on here. You're reminded I'm drawing in pen so you can see it. You should really be drawing in pencil. Start by drawing a picture of the movement. If you can't draw in 3D, draw the front face. You can add a little bit of thickness to your movement by just adding a little bit of thickness at 45 degrees. So using your thumb to give you the line, you can add the thickness. You then need to create for me a range of ideas. So I could create quite easily uh, a square idea that the hands sit in the middle there. So something like seven o'clock. I could add a little bit of thickness to that. And then I could add a little frame around the inside edge. And then if I want to show that the movement is set a little further back, I can drop that in. So you're looking a little bit like you are looking inside a drawer. So there's my movement sat in the middle. So I've got one idea, which is pretty boring, but it's an idea to start from. I could then change that idea. So I could use the same square idea, but bearing in mind it's going into schools and going into lots and lots of different departments, I could then have a little box at the top here in which I could put cut out letters to show the subjects. So I could put something like maths. I can still put a little bit of thickness on that, and I can put a little more thickness on the main clock. So already I've got a design which has altered and changed. So again, I can add my little frame on there. I can then put my little depth on the inside, and then I can put my clock hands back in the middle. Now, if you're doing something that's going to be different, you want something that maybe uses a standard shape and then has other things plug into it. So I could, for instance, use the same background shape and I could use, put some little slots in the side. So I could cut some slots with a saw and I could make some uh, designs that had different shapes to suit different departments. So I could put 
for the DT department, for instance. I could put some shapes like that. Still don't need to worry too much about thickness because I can put a little bit of thickness like that on there. And then I can put my main thickness onto my case there. And then I can put my framework in there. Once you've created a range of ideas and you've got yourself uh, two or three different ideas that develop from this basic one, you can explain how they've altered. So I could put here a little arrow and explain that I've added a header or I've added equipment to show subject. And then you need to remind yourself of what you're going to make the materials from. So our basic box shape, we might choose to make from some plywood like that. In which case, I'm going to label that and I'm going to make that from plywood. My letters at the top here, I might choose to cut them out on the CNC machine out of some bright acrylic. In which case I can label that and I can put two things. I can put CNC laser cut shapes and I can also remind them that they're made from acrylic bright colours. Now you will know from your day-to-day -day life that we can stick plastic down quite easily. If it's being stuck to a flat surface we could put some car badge tape, or we could put some double-sided sticky tape, or we could put something like epoxy resin on the back and stick it down. If it was going to be made en masse in a manufacturing institute, it would always need to be quite a quick application. So something like badge tape or double-sided sticky tape would do to then just stick your shape straight down. So again, we could add a construction method here of stuck with foam double sided tape. You're going to add at least three labels to each of your designs. You're going to design at least three or four different designs as well as a basic idea that you're going to develop from. You need to try and include a title. So you can put at the top design ideas for and you can explain what they're for. If you have time, you're going to use no more than two crayons to apply a little bit of colour. One of the techniques you could do is to just put a little bit of colour around the shape at the bottom to give it the idea that it's actually sat on a surface. So I would put just a little bit of colour like that. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to just physically colour in two or three items. So I might choose to colour in the handle on the saw here. It doesn't necessarily need to bear any resemblance to the colour that the product will be or what the material is actually made from. The colour is there just to make the drawing look a little more finished. One last thing that you could do, if you want to, is to shade it a light, a medium and a dark tone. So I could use my same green and I could shade this a very, very light tone. It only needs to have a very small amount of colour on it. This can be a, a quite a dark tone because it's on the end and out the way and will be in the dark. So I'm going to put two layers on that, as you've had a go at doing in previous work. And then this area here, would be my medium tone which would be in between and because it's so long and thin you can get away with this one in terms of and just that basic little tiny bit of color starts to make that sheet look complete one last trick is if you use a straight edge and uh, your pencil you can just put a couple of lines like that across where you think the glass is going to be and it will make it look a little bit like glass. So all you need to do is to put two little lines quite close together 
at the same angle as if the lights reflect. So a quick recap, you're reminded that you're designing one basic design for a clock using a standard mechanism. The standard mechanism you'll see on the whiteboard or the screen will need those sizes. And then from that, you're creating at least three, if not four, colored, annotated designs that are all based on this original design. You have today's lesson to do that.